All right, so today I am going to be speaking about um, spiritual gifts, the spiritual gifts of healing. I'm continuing um, a series that we started a bit before the summer holiday. Um, and we've already said quite a lot about spiritual gifts. So if you've missed those, um, I would encourage you to do go and have a listen or a watch of them on, on our website, um, just so that you can sort of fill in some of the, the back, the back story, as it were, to, to fully understand what we're talking about today. I will do a quick recap, but let's first find our verse that I'll be using today. It's one I've been using quite a bit throughout the series. It's from 1 Corinthians 12, um, starting at verse 7. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. And it basically says this, it says, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by that one Spirit to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them, eat them to each one just as he determines." And if you scan down in your Bibles near the bottom of that chapter, you will also see some further mention of the spiritual gifts of healing in verses 28 and 30. So let's just recap some of our spiritual gifts then, what we've been talking about, just so that we can put this in context, because it's been a while um, since since we've looked at it. So, as Keith was mentioning in his prayer earlier on, um, he thanked God that we had the privilege to work with him. And I'm adding in there, yes, that's good, because it's not instead of him. And that applies also with spiritual gifts. They enable us to work with God, not instead of God. We've learned that there are different kinds of spiritual gifts. We've learned that they're available to all Christians who love and follow Jesus, not just the person up at the front on a Sunday. Everybody is encouraged to use their spiritual gifts. We've learned that gifts are given by the will of the Holy Spirit. He determines, in our verse today, he determines the gifts that are given to whom, and they are empowered by him. It's not our power. So resist the urge or temptation to go around saying, oh well, I prayed for so and so and I healed them, or I saved whoever it was because I chatted to them about salvation or whatever. No, you prayed, but God healed. You prayed, but God saved. All right. We've also learnt that we are all part, all of this, all these gifts are part of how the church is supposed to function, which is as a body, where each part of the body plays their part to strengthen and support and encourage the other. We need to remember that our gifts are not for me. So the gift that you have is not for you. It's for the other people. It's not about us. It's about serving others. And equally... From the flip side of that, we need to learn that, okay, I might not be gifted in this area, or I might not 
have whatever gift it is, but I need that in my life at the moment. So actually, go to someone else in the church and say, hey, can you pray for me? Can you help me? Can you use a gift I've seen in you for me? All right, rather than, I don't know, trying to do it all by yourself and getting frustrated because you haven't got the gifts or, or the ability or whatever. We're in this together. And we've also learned that the Bible tells us that we should all be eagerly desiring spiritual gifts and we should be putting them into practice. Okay, so that's a very brief summary of about five or six other sermons. If you want detail on those, do go and have a look. But in today's passage, we see we have the gifts of healings mentioned, or the gifts of healing. King James says healings. Um, let's begin by looking at why this gift is described in a different way, I believe, to the others mentioned here. We have faith, we have wisdom or a message of wisdom, we have prophecy, but when it comes to healing, it doesn't just say healing, it says gifts of healing. And I think one of the mistakes that we make when we try to understand the spiritual gifts of healing is that it works in the same way as the gift of teaching or encouragement or evangelism for example in that if you have that gifting you're able to function in that whenever you like i used to be a school teacher um, i can teach you something at any time all right i can sit down and scribble something out and, and teach you whatever it is I can do that. But if we assume, when, is, when, when you talk about healing, we can sometimes assume that it works in the same way. That if we have the gifts of healing, that we can just heal people like that whenever we want, you know, or the Holy Spirit works through us to heal people, whatever. Okay? But in practice, that just isn't the case with this gift. Okay? I think they're described as gifts in the plural for a reason. Because I think there is no one gift of healing that covers every eventuality and every disease or infirmity, but a variety of different gifts that heal a variety of different things. Now, I have met people who, when they pray and ask God for healing, they they're particularly good at praying for a certain kind of problem or illness or disease. So you might have someone who, when they pray for people with back problems, most of the time those people experience healing of some degree or another. But if that same person prays for someone's stomach ache, well, it might work, but maybe not. But then someone else might be praying for the stomach ache and... They have that particular gift for that particular healing. So it could be that. Okay. So I think there's a variety of healing gifts that can work in this way. Now, this is it's an interesting one because I've heard sermons on healing before. And I do, I do want to stir up your faith for healing. But I also want to balance it with what the Bible actually says and what it doesn't say as well. So I have seen others prayed for and healing take place. I've, I've seen it happen. I've also prayed for people and they've been healed. It's happened. Sometimes it's happened right there on the spot. Other times it doesn't. And they tell me a bit later on that the healing came a little bit later. And that's usually where preachers kind of stop and they move on to the next point. But I think it's even more important to say, I have prayed for people to be healed and they have not been healed at all. 
And I would say that in my case, that's at least 70% of the time. When somebody actually does get healed, it's, it surprises me as much as it surprises the other person, okay? It doesn't happen every time. And a lot of people think that when you pray for healing or, or, or some other spiritual gifts as well, that you have to follow some kind of magic formula. If only you say the right words in, in the right order or maybe at the right volume. Yeah, the sound system was too quiet. That's why people didn't get healed. Yeah, whatever. Okay. It's not about how loud you pray or how many times someone whacks you on the head with a Bible or whatever it is. Okay, I've seen some funny stuff, right? And some of it's just plain weird, okay? It's not about that, okay? And that won't determine whether you receive your healing or not. And it's not about trying to muster up Faith. Faith does play a part, which I'll come to, but it's not about trying to work up, oh, I don't have enough faith, or I, I can't pray for that person because I'm not, feeling, I'm not feeling the faith today, or whatever, right? It's not about that. Because it's not about us. It's all about God. And I would say, just as the Holy Spirit determines who gets what spiritual gift and who doesn't get what spiritual gift, it is also the Holy Spirit who determines who is healed and who isn't. Healing is a gift from God. It's not a right I just want to read a little extract from this book that I've been reading about spiritual gifts. I'm a guy called Sam Storms. And he says this. He says, the fact that healing is an expression of divine mercy means that it should never be viewed as a right or something the Christian can claim. There is no place in the life of the believer or the local church for the presumptuous approach to healing that is found in advocates of the healing and wealth gospel or in the word of faith movement. Healing is not the payment of a debt. God doesn't owe us healing. We don't deserve healing. I believe we should have faith for healing, but there is a vast difference between faith in divine mercy and presumption based on an alleged right. Something to think about there. But because we're talking about spiritual gifts, I think we also automatically assume that the answer to our prayer must come through supernatural means. And indeed it can. But sometimes we think that's the only way it can or should happen. We think, well, we need to be zapped. Or, or we need to feel the tingles when somebody prays. It might happen, but it might not. But hey, now the pain in my arm's gone. Okay, praise God, it can work like that. But I believe God is bigger than our narrow definitions and stereotypical boxes we like to squeeze things into. I believe God blessed humanity with brains. Praise God. Sometimes you may be thinking, well, maybe he missed a few people out, but I believe God blessed humanity with brains and intellect, okay? He's blessed us with intelligence and with a desire to discover and learn new things about this wonderful creation that he's made, to use our understanding and the scientific principles God has put into place, and yes, God made biology. God made physics and chemistry. Whoa, yes. God made these things. We just discover 
what he's already done as we study them. And humanity has taken these God-given abilities and talents and put them to good use. And over the years, we have developed all sorts of amazing things, like better housing. Yeah? Aren't you glad for your double glazing and your central heating? You're not still living under a bush somewhere, you know, in a tent. Better sanitation. Flushing toilets. And if you look back in history, you know, that's, that, that's a fairly recent development. Pr praise God, they're fantastic. And medicine. Now, I don't believe that medicine is of the devil. It's one of the many blessings of God. Right, it reminds me of a story. I'm sure you've heard it before. It reminds me of a story of a guy who was caught in a flood. And he climbed onto the roof of his house in order to survive and await rescue. And while he was on the roof of his house and the waters were all around him, he, he prayed. and He said, God, please, will you rescue me from this terrible situation? And after a little while, along came a chap in a canoe. And he said to the guy on the roof of the house, there's space in my canoe, why don't you jump in? I'll, I'll take you to safety. But the chap says, well, no thanks. I've prayed and I'm, ask, and, and, and I'm waiting for God to come and rescue me. So he said, all right, fine, and off he went. A little while later, someone in a speedboat pulled up and said, hey, why don't you jump in the speedboat? I can take you to safety, no problem. But again, he said, no thanks. I'm waiting for God to rescue me. And then a little while later, a helicopter hovered overhead and the guy with this little loudspeaker said, hey, you down there, we're here to rescue you, we had to save you. And the guy says, no thanks, I'm waiting for God to rescue me. So off the helicopter flew. A little while later, the man drowned. And when he got to heaven, he was rather cross with God. And he went to God and he said, well, so what's the deal then? I prayed and asked you to come and rescue me. Why didn't, what happened? I've died. Why didn't you come and rescue me? But God responded and said to him, well, I sent you a canoe. I sent you a speedboat and I sent you a helicopter, but you didn't take any of them. So there you are. It's wonderful to be healed supernaturally. But don't dismiss the blessing of medicine that God has also given to us. Well, let's look quickly at the role of faith in healing. So what about this aspect of faith then? Because it is mentioned quite a bit in the Bible in a load of various different places when healing is being spoken about. So... It is true that is mentioned in lots of places, but there are some places where it's not mentioned in healing stories. If we look at John 5.19, we hear of the man who had been an invalid for 38 years. We see no evidence of faith in his part, yet Jesus still heals him. And if we look at the Gospel of John as a whole, faith isn't mentioned as a prerequisite of healing in there either. However, most cases where Jesus healed, it was in response to somebody's faith. When Jesus saw the, friend, the faith of the friends of a paralytic man, you see the story in Matthew 9, he healed him. And in the same chapter, Jesus restores the sight of two blind men according to their faith. But notice something about faith here. Let me just read you this story very quickly. So I want you to notice something. So Matthew 9, verse 27. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him, and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. 
and their sight was restored. Notice something about their faith here. It's not the strength of their faith. It wasn't faith itself that brought about healing. Jesus didn't ask them if they had faith that it was his will to heal them either. Just that they had faith in his ability to do it. So asking ourselves how much faith is required is the wrong kind of question, but rather in whom are we placing our faith? Faith is important because it takes the focus away from us and puts it onto Jesus. Having faith admits our weakness and relies upon his strength and his ability. Faith is not a force that compels God to act. It's a laying down our will in submission to his and relying on his grace and his mercy. Jesus did tell us to pray for the sick. He did say that people would be healed if we prayed for them. But he didn't say everyone we prayed for would be healed. Don't get me wrong, I truly believe in a God of healing and I know the Holy Spirit still heals supernaturally today. I've, I've seen it. But not everyone will be healed. And I'm not going into all the details of the whys and why nots and what ifs now, but it's true. Not everyone gets healed. The big thing I want you to remember, if nothing else from today's sermon is that we don't do the healing. God does. It's not up to us, it's up to God. And sometimes God's ways are not our ways. Sometimes what we think is the best for us or our loved ones is not his way. It's our responsibility to obey, to pray for healing. But then the rest is up to God. We can get so fixated on results, can't we? And sometimes that really stops us because we start saying to ourselves, oh, oh, I won't pray for healing just in case it doesn't work. Or I won't pray for healing because I might end up looking stupid. I won't pray for someone to be healed because it might make God and Christianity look bad when nothing happens. Or it might damage our witness if the person isn't healed. But all of that is God's business, not ours. Ours is to obey. As with any spiritual gift, we obey. And then the rest is up to God. I've got examples here of places in the Bible where people were healed, where places in the Bible where people weren't healed. I'll just mention one. So the one that sticks out to me um, is the, the man at the pool of Bethsaida, the, the, the invalid man. He might have been a cripple or paralyzed, it doesn't quite say. The whole thing about this pool is when the waters got stirred, everyone who was poorly would jump in because they believed if you were the first one in there when the waters were sort of bubbling, you would get healed. Right? So loads of poorly people all camped out around this pool so that when it so happened to bubble, they could all kind of try and jump in to be the first to get their healing. And this guy had been lying by the pool for a very long time. I think he said 30 years or something. He'd been lying by this pool trying to be the first one to jump in. But because of his condition, he couldn't quite do it. He needed someone else to help him to get there. But they were all too busy trying to jump in themselves. So no one bothered to help him. And Jesus comes to him and he says, do you want to be healed? And he says, they have a conversation. It ends up that this guy at the pool is healed. That's great. But this is also a good example of times when Jesus didn't heal everybody. If everyone around the pool was healed, they would have written that down. There's other times when Jesus goes to 
a place or a city and everyone who comes to and gets healed. They recorded that bit. But they didn't say everyone at the pool got healed, just this one particular chap. There we are. There's lots of other examples and things that we could look at, but we don't have time for that now. The, the coffee's getting cold. But I'll just end with this very important point. Because we can run the danger Healing, yeah, we can run the danger of losing sight of the image of God in people if we're not careful. Just because somebody isn't healed doesn't make them any less of a person. It doesn't make them any less of an image bearer of God. Jackie was talking about the Paralympics earlier. Doesn't mean that because you have a, a disability or whatever, it doesn't mean you're less. It doesn't mean that God can't work in your life he can and he does I was really blessed watching the news the other day I don't get the option to watch the news every now and then but sometimes I do and a Paralympian was being interviewed and asked about she'd fallen off her bicycle a few days before and had crashed out of that race and she really didn't feel she could get back on again but she did and she won a medal when she did this few days later and they said well what gave you you know what gave you that determination to get back on your bike and, and have another go and she just shared about Jesus she just spoke about her faith and was amazing it was like five minutes of live TV on the BBC this witness and they didn't interrupt her and they didn't cut her off and after she'd finished the presenter said wow that's amazing that's amazing she may not be healed, but God is still working in her life. Sometimes God's ways are not our ways. It's up to God. And if we think about it honestly, are any of us perfect this side of heaven? So let's not discount people just because they may, they may have received healing or they might not have received healing. We're all in this together. We're all still part of the body together. But we can look forward to a day when we will have recreated bodies, where there will be no more sickness or physical death anymore on the new heaven and the new earth when everything is recreated and put right as sin and the results of the fall are removed from creation but in the meanwhile in the here and now just be obedient to jesus be obedient to the leading of the holy spirit use your spiritual gifts whatever they may be even if you don't think you have a spiritual gift of healing, still pray for someone to be healed. Pray for the sick. But leave the results to Jesus. Amen.